for Showmaker in the lane phase, so they're gonna go towards top side, and Showmaker will want to move top as much as possible because Faker will have to play safe against Syndra Jarvan. And earlier when he was asked by Karai in his interview what exactly happened with the Predator, he said I just liked it. He said it like hooked at him, they had like an eye-to-eye -eye moment, they said we're meant for each other. Oh my oh, god! There's gonna be a 5v5 level 1 if one. There's the bomb. That one. Are gonna back off. Okay. My heart skipped the beat there for a second because I thought they were both. That would have decided the game potentially. That was my. We had slow early games. This was my time to shine, boys. You've been able to talk about meta. I'm like, oh, please, level one. But Damon's level one is so much stronger with things like the uh, the Lucian, the Maokai, the MF. You can just lock down one target, PTA, and it looks like top lane brush has been the point of contention for both teams to get some early vision for the lane to get the push. Faker's gonna ward there. Blue buff. So T1 have some information to work with in the early game. So interesting. Are they going to try to evade bot side? They, they delayed the bases so long, and then they're going to go in. And they're hoping potentially, okay, it's just going to be for the ward. Double uh, and then they will start uh, on that blue buff. Yeah, it looks like both junglers will be pathing top. Maybe Canyon wants to be creative here. He has got the sweeper. He must know that something is watered on the map, judging by T1's movement around. So maybe he wants to sweep out of Raptors, or look for some kind of level 2 gank, perhaps, to force out a flash from the Rise or bot lane. Such good information at level 1 coming out from T1. A pretty good idea, or we'll be able to track Canyon shortly, assuming he does appear on some vision. Canyon is not starting top side, of course. Jarvan level 2 ganks or early ganks in general, always something that can be incredibly lethal. Jarvan has been a very feast or famine champion in this tournament. We saw a lot of early trial at the start of the tournament, not a lot of early results, but a champion that when it gets going is incredibly oppressive. It's also worth noting. Oh, there we go. Level 1 exhaust now coming out, firing back to talk about weak early lane yeah. phase for Zillion. Level 1 super underwhelming. I mean, that was just super disrespectful. He like walked through barrel to actually throw the bomb on a ghost. They do have the AD health advantage, but that Q through the minion actually got carried really low. And he's starting a very defensive setup, so it is going to be Guardian, it is going to be Relic Shield, it is going to be Exhaust, but now no sums and you have Flash on Barrel. You just call Canyon down and it feels like Carry is just dead. And that was a pretty significant misposition. Yeah, the good news for T1 though is they've had vision on Canyon the whole game. They saw him on Raptors, they just saw him go towards blue, so T1 can afford to step up and push this wave in the stack. They don't have to be scared of getting ganked unless Canyon backtracks after Gromp and goes towards the bottom side of the map. Uh, he did just take it, and he's moving towards mid, so fastest level 3 in the game. Red, Raptors into Grom, but now he wants to do something with it. Getting Faker Splash mid. early would be disaster for T1 because they have to the whole game long. Owners on red, this is a 1v2. Faker needs to be very careful. Black Dragon Flash, man. Make it happen. That's going to be an easy fall. Faker now locked down. He's flash up safety, but the red buff still ticking. Locked up. Does sidestep the Dark Sphere. Auto attack. Finishes the job. Showmaker yeah, finds the kill. Yeah, it's as simple as that when you're playing Rise into Syndra Jarvan. They have so much early game set up, and with no vision around mid, Faker doesn't have anywhere to hug. If he has a wall towards yeah. top side, he can hug bot side. If he has a wall towards top side, he can hug top side. But they only really spot the Jarvan going to Grom, so he should have known this was coming. But he tries to get the cannon and does end up dying. Damwon are going to have so much control through mid right now. Faker yeah. will never really be able to push out. I was expecting him to play towards bot side, because to your point, they, they did kind of know that he was clearing up towards top and, and would like to come from that side, but uh, didn't have eyes on Jarvan for a while, and Faker was actually kind of edging towards the top side of the map, so as soon as you get hit and the follow-through comes down, you're just gonna die, and that goes to worse because he expended the flash, they got no summoners, and you still died. Plus, the first blood went to Showmaker, and it is the tier two boots bought up immediately with Predator. He, last, he did this against Mad, and then basically said it was for fun, but I do not buy it. No. One man is not having a lot of fun. His carry here on the bottom side. These early trades, miserable right now for the Jin and the Zillion. Of course, we get later in the game, much stronger. Oh, really level, so very hard. And, I'm gonna yeah, as you highlighted, Showmaker not buying for lane in this case, buying for the tier two Predator boots. That much easier oh, to find in the setup. And Canyon, waiting in the darkness, really clever pathing here. Faker has to be careful. He knows there's a pink in river, so he's gonna EQ over the wall, waits for his EQ, four seconds left on it, then he's gonna flash over when Showmaker hits the stun. Maybe he can just save it here. Faker might be dead if he walks up, but there's no creeps for him to last hit, so there's no reason to walk up. He can just let the wave come into him. Nice creative try there from Canyon to avoid the vision, but we'll just go end up and uh, clear his second respawn. Canyon has not faced yet, and Owner is quite a few camps up. And I do think this pick about the Predator a little bit. You know, it's obviously weaker for the 1v1, but if you can get the push and move towards sides, if you think that this, this game is gonna be won, by punishing sides, by punishing things like the Zillion that we talked about, by punishing things like this cannon, that it can have a lot of value. And Zillion did just base. Gumiyushi is by himself here, Maker. and Showmaker is behind, and this is looking like a dead Jin. Rain comes down, stun getting a flash away from owners in the area. Showmaker needs to retreat back into his team. Can't look for the Malachi knock back to stop. Zin's down again. Canyon on the way in, that's gonna be a Malachi. He's gonna go right back. 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 He
more kills, but can't get anything else as Dan want Kia pull out. Yeah, Damwon has to be careful. The reason is Khan just based in front of Khan and he had TP. He's gonna use it to lane now, but I think Damwon were maybe calling that there's a TP chance opportunity there. Two versus four, going all in for one there for T1. Small win, but owner lost his double buffs. Yeah, it was good for Mona though, being able to actually match this on the play. If owner's not there, that's a free kill. That's multiple plates. Mm -hmm. Instead, he does show up just in time, the root on his Showmaker, and then Barrel has to peel for Showmaker. But that means he's going to pick up Tower Rager, he's going to go down, and it does allow them to defend in this situation. Yes, you lose the double buff, but you got flashes you know, off of Canyon, and you went in a pretty good spot. I thought he was about to just flash in. On the Khan, he was one creep away, so I thought he was just about to go for the all-in, but it looks like Khan will be the one getting We've seen this play before, big on the rise, top side, uh, this series, of course, playoffs. He's gonna go for that one, but for now, just threatening, as long as he has that ultimate up and available, Khan has to give him a little bit of respect here, but Khan with the ultimate, kind of overcommits, does not connect on that ultimate, he's turning against him quite rapidly. That said, checking in across the board, massive individual CS lead for owner at this early game, he's very focused on covering for the team, and doesn't quite have that same reliable clear speed that the Zin does. And that's the risk when you play Jarvan. This champion just clears oh, more bigger. slowly. They're going by here. Barrel, no flash. Or coming in. Barrel going to be in trouble. He's going to try to get anything done here. Nope. He's just going to get deleted. Twisted advance. Or will get knocked down. T1 control the bottom side. Yeah, Killer with the Baker. Maybe they can translate that into a Drake. But he's companion. He's been hovering towards his top side. Kana has cleared out the way for now, but he's going to have to back off because Showmaker can run top with Predator after having pushed out the wave. Canyon won't be level 6, so Kana will just back off without having to use Flash. And a small cross map coming in from Dabble. Does always hurt. He's got no GP, so the wave is going to bounce. Then you're in that bit of a different, dangerous situation. But Kana now, seeing Showmaker mid, will try to push his way back out. Checks the brush with the Shuriken. But doesn't see Kid. He has no eyes on him just yet. Yeah, the big problem T1 again has is Showmaker has TP. Just to talk about TP, there is Ale. Showmaker can just push in mid now base. Yeah. And he can match up play bot if T1 over force. Or he can TP top. To make sure the yeah. play happens, Kana. Drag, drag the flash out from Kana. Has the ultimate available, waiting for a brief moment to lock it down. But damn, what an easy yeah. kill pickup on the top side. Yeah, Kana knew jungle was top side. He flashes a little bit to the side there, rather than towards this tower. So not much distance gained. Will end up falling. Now the cannon has no TP, no flash, and is losing lane. Owner's looking for a cross map, but Showmaker has TP. Well, how close to six is Carry? If Carry gets six, this dive actually becomes really doable. I'm not sure that they'll actually go for it in the 3v2, knowing the Showmaker could actually TP to match, but. If Lord we could the see wall. the experience, it could happen. Spots owner Faker. Flash is about to come off the cooldown. For now, they're just pressuring. Looks like at least one tower player will go over. He's going to pick that one up. But between three, so not the biggest gold advantage, but a small positive is four shot with that speed buff comes out. And it is worth noting that it's actually Karen going for the tier second here. And when you're not going to play Spell Thieves on the Zillion, you do need that mana regen. It is such a mana hungry champion. Oftentimes, you can just sit on the tier though and then go into your support item. You don't need to actually complete that by any means, but. Uh, things are going to get problematic on this top side because Canyon already got the kill, they got the flash off of Kana, and now they're going to take Herald and look to try to blow that open. Yeah, Tion have been sieging this bot tier one for at least a minute and a minute and a half now, but they can't commit because Showmaker has TP, so Damwon just cross up and get themselves a Herald. We talked about Damwon having to win the early game. They've got three kills on the top side of the map, one of them on Lucian, one of them on the Syndra. Early boots for Showmaker to sneak around the map, TP advantage, and now they've got the Herald too, so I feel like their early game towards the top side is working out pretty perfectly here. And uh, T1 haven't really found much response on the bot side of the map. We're holding pressure in mid lane for now. Predator pop by Showmaker. Looks like just to get a little bit extra movement speed in some of those trades. So Karia is now 6, and it looks like their response is just going to be to try to take this dragon. But it will put Kana in, in a very heavily losing situation because he doesn't know, you know where J4 is. They haven't seen Candy in a long time. Owner hovering here around mid. Baker looks to be the target once more. Baker, side is kind of big, Canyon would have followed up there. And crucially, while Owner does have a massive individual CS lead, he had not recalled yet, so didn't actually have an advantage in terms of itemization of that and come down to the 2v2. And looks like they're just gonna hand off blue buff and wait for their opportunity with Herald. This Khan now has a top record for about two or three minutes ago. Kana was one who was able to zone away Khan, but now without Flash, it's really hard to kind of force the Lucian back or threaten any kind of all-in when you're behind like this. And Barrel moving towards the top side. Looks like Damwon might want to just put the grump there for Canyon and look to Herald this. Carry us there to respond and Faker has TP up soon after three bases now. And you have to remember if you're going for one of these aggressive plays, Carrier has the ultimate available now, which is going to be so critical to counteract some of these upfront burst cooldowns, things like the Syndra ultimate. Both teams are just reading each other's plays so perfectly, all their cross mapping. Very good decisions coming out from both these teams. Carrier top side here, that one would have cracked open that tier 1, but because they see them there, they're going to go towards mid to try to catch T1 as they rotate down towards the mid lane canyon, getting some vision from the team.
Into the wall. Faker returning to lane now. Massive wave here. He's going to miss at least a few CS. Yeah, time. Down one Pia not really feeling confident enough to go for the dive, but on the top side they are. T1. Steps the forward wins, but be big here. Good side step from Khan though, stopping that play in its tracks. A decent amount of time committed for T1 on the top side means Down one Kia gets primary access or priority access. Out of it. T1 make plays towards the top side, but Down one can respond towards the bot side. So it feels like every play T1 are making, Down one are just getting more, right? They threaten something, bot, Down one get a kill, and they get a herald. Now they're threatening something top. And they just got a dragon for free, so no neutrals for T1 in this early game. And they're slowly slipping behind in the gold lead. They need to find something soon, but like you said, Adele, their scaling is yeah. pretty. Pretty comfortable. I mean, I think I think if you're looking at the bot lane and you you knew you could get to this point with the zillion, you're up a little bit of farm there on Gumiyushi, you would be very, very happy. And, and owner, he has been getting stuff done because he has been having very efficiently, farming more heavily. Kane has been kind of ghosting his lanes and trying to find these plays. And if they could get a kill here on Khan, that would do a lot to get Kana back in this. And it looks like they're moving topside potentially with the Realm War. Yeah, Kana fake base there, I think, and just hitting the bush. So Khan thought he could push out. And they tried to set up a trap, but Khan was respects it very well and will back off. He has a Gale Force already, so a lot of the mobility yeah, on the solution. And he will win out this 1v1 very, very hard the later the game goes, especially right now. Oh, has to dash away. Those last few autos to find the knockup with the blade to go back next. A decent amount of damage down on the con, trying to support Khan. Pushing out this lane. A lot of time spent there. Baker not quite sidestepping on that one. It's going to be locked up the chain. CC is just too hard. The man cannot push a single button, but it might not matter, because Karia is bringing him back to life. But now if you want to look into the turn, this is the power of Zillion. Owner's on the way in. Connor ready to come over the wall. But no, he is not going to commit quite yet. Waiting, fighting his time. Now the ulti comes out, but is it too late? Predator coming in for Show Baker. They're going to finish one kill, and now Khan is coming in looking for cleanup. Both sides backing away. At the end of the day, just Khan is dropping. Any side step, Blackjack should connect. Oh, Nicely done, and Khan coming in on the TP did turn that for Dawnwall, but you see the power of the Zillion there. The ult used, then the exhaust used after the ult onto Showmaker, really hampering Showmaker's ability to actually burst down Baker, and it does save Baker. They get a kill back, but still, Dawnwall are trading back and forth, and they're going to drop the Herald here now with T1 on a reset. We'll see how quickly they can actually get out to mid to try to defend this play. Yeah, it feels like every play is kind of going in Damwon's favor, whether it's a cross map or a match. T1, yes, you get a one-to-one, -one, but the Herald's going to come down. And look at this cannon. One little finger is ulting on them. Canyon ready to go in. Excellent. Excellent use of the stare down. Come in. Three, 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 five, picking his burning. Not quite enough. He's healing up just in time. We put, we're taking him out safety. That up as well. They will walk away. The board plate's going down in favor of Dawan Kian. So many blinking health bars. Man, Showmaker, the Everfrost there was so big. As Baker and, and Gumiyushi arrive, they're both lined up. They get double Everfrost rooted. The flag and drag through two from Canyon. And that means not only do they get sums, they get the tower. Yeah, they thought they could make a pick on the Showmaker because he has no flash. And without the Syndra ult and the Jargon ult, maybe Baker pulled, they don't have enough damage to burst us down and we can get a kill here for free for Damon over extending, but in the end oh, Damon will get the tower. Yushi has no summoners. He's got Zillion. He's got the summoner. That'll save him, but what will save Kana in this top thing? 20 CS down, down to level up level 9 though, but no mythic complete with this Lucian. It's just gonna get stronger and stronger. I mean, for Kana, you gotta hope for 5v5, right? You're not gonna be winning that 1v1 at all this game until you get to maybe really late stages if you face checks you or something. We've seen those kind of plays happen, but generally it's about the 5v5 here for T1. But at this point, Dom1 are extending a pretty significant gold lead. This is what's feeling like the first significant one of the game. It's closing in on that 2k margin. They do have the first dragon for themselves. It wasn't a super early break, so we're not obviously worried about Soul at this point, but uh, I do think T1 are going to want to be wanting to start fighting around these objectives. Yeah, that's completely right, and that's exactly what happened in game one. Dom1 had an early gold lead. They got the first dragon. They set up around the second dragon, and T1 was forced to contest around the second and third dragon. That's where Dom1 escalated the gold lead and snowballed the game towards Baron. It out, so you have to be very careful if Damwon have set up. Very dangerous to face check the Maokai and the Sinja. They'll have so much vision control with the saplings. You can see again why they've gone for the Maokai even outside of the contract of Leona. There is so much of that vision control. They've highlighted Damwon Kia now setting up for the Herald. T1, a lot of members in the area. Kana coming down does have all the available, but have to see if T1 really want to contest this. It's a high risk scenario. You get a lot of value out of that cannon. It's an easy fight, but a lot of potential burst damage can come through. Areas all be not quite off cooldown yet. Kana has to <laughs> of kids and he won't be spotted, so he can hide around the wall here. Damwon won't spot him just yet, but if Damwon overcommits, they know there's a cannon. They'll spot him out now, and now the Herald's reset. The T1 are stacked up. Flash in, that's gonna be the drama. Oh, yeah. But now, we're all coming into the MF. Bullet time looking good. Give me a chance right for my Kana. Shoemaker still standing, Ghost Canyon, Barrel still alive. 
end of the day, DK still holding on. It's a bloodbath, but nobody's that any closer to getting the Herald knocked down. Tomokia standing strong here. Owner sped up, ready to dive in if he needs to. Showmaker low mana. Blinking back and forth. T1, they've lost the stare down. They will back away and concede the Herald to Dom Juan Kia. Yeah, that's going to be it. Kana found a massive Not engage there. Ghost didn't have any to shut the cannon down, and that's what saved the fight for T1. It looked disastrous because as they pushed Damon away, Damon realized T1 was overstacked. They engage with Canyon flashing forwards. Really good investment to follow up. But T1 have the Zillion, and T1 have the Zinzao ultimate to negate all the damage. So it looked bad, but it wasn't as bad when you zoom in. But it is a nice punish because Ubiyushi, they knew he had no flash because of that Realm War play mid lane. So they go in immediately for him. Maokai ultimate, J4 ultimate, MF ultimate, all coming over top. Makes it very difficult for T1 to turn. And then in comes Kana once that expires. Yeah, Showmaker just melts straight through. And T1, the only real way they can yeah. contest is if, if owner hits a W, win becomes lightning, and then he can dash in and maybe find a single target, because that's what T1's pump does when the cannon dies. But you can see the Don Juan maybe have to respect the cannon as we get later in the game. The only reason that really worked out so well for them is because the cannon is is behind. He is not wildly far ahead. That ult is killed if they're in late game and Khan leaps in like that, it will cost him his life every single time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ghost, though, didn't have his exhaust for that fight. As, as oh, owner. Out, owner. Oh, you look at that. Lock down, coming. walking in, healing, holding on for now. Carry coming in over the wall. Has to use the ultimate. They have to wait this one out. The lock up there to keep the from Major. They take it down. Barrel, the revive coming through just in time. And Carry has been so clutch with these revives, getting so much value already in this game. And, and I do think that Zillion is a little bit of a, a ticking time bomb. It's very difficult to deal with this. I mean, Don Juan have, have been playing out the zone control so well, utilizing the Maokai, utilizing the J4 and the MF. But the longer the game goes, the shorter those cooldowns get for Zillion, and the, the tougher it is to actually punch through. What is it with 10 C1 series and support picks? MF Syrah now things like Zillion and Maokai coming through, saving the day, and T1 adapting so well with the pick. We'll see if they can net them this win here, because that one's fast in Zao. Canyon has no flash. Actually, doesn't either. Push the EQ out to save to look for the collapse. Can't afford to overextend here, but all of T1 ready to collapse. The gym with the ultimate coming in as well, and T1. They can get started, they can scale up in these fights. The cannon's so powerful. We may see a similar situation to last game where it comes down to a very tense Baron take and a single AoE all really deciding the game. It feels like Zillion's just slowing the pace of the game down. It's yeah. just slowing down the kills for Damwon to snowball the game. It's almost like the ship is slowly sinking, but you're just patching the holes with the Zillion ult. So T1, yes, you're stopping these kills from happening, and you're kind of trading one for one, but you're going down in the trades. The only good news for them is their scaling is good. The problem is Damwon have two dragons. Well, Soul once again is in game one, and they still have control of the map. I also really like the build adaptation here from Barrel. The first time he actually played, as we'll see if they can get away, everyone going towards top. The first time he played this, he went Dead Bands as his first item. This time it is actually going to be more about the poke. It's going to be more about utilizing space and staying away from T1, keeping them at arm's length. So instead, he swaps up the item build here. And I think it's, it's really, really intelligent. Oh yeah, definitely. And you just look at the map state, similar to every single game so far. Cross maps coming in, instant response from both teams. Beautiful League of Legends coming out, trades off, Bob the Jail once again. And both these teams have just been reading the map so well, whether it's match plays or to cross map and trade. T1 have to push in mid though, so they kind of have two lanes to play on, and they can start hitting this mid tier one. But Khan has TP, and so does Showmaker, who's facing right now. And again, I think the Zillion can't be highlighted enough. Gumiushi playing so far forward, Damwon Kia. Lots of members in that area. Maybe felt like they could go for a pick, but Carry is waiting right over the wall, hovering between mid and bot, ready to come in with that ultimate and deny that kill from coming through. This is such a nuisance for Dom Juan to deal with. It's such a frustrating pick because it really does change the way you play. You know, with these kind of styles of compositions that Dom Juan is running, it's generally just kind of like overwhelming the force that you want to throw on one member, insta kill them, and then play out the fight from a 5v4 state. Zillion says you can't do that. So you have to really kind of spread out your cooldowns. You can't fully commit everything. If you throw J4 all, MF all, Showmakers all, everything on one person to try to kill them and they get Zillion ulted, you're going to lose the extended play. So they've got to be really smart about how they're spending their damage. Yeah, of course, Zillion really good into first mages like Syndra. The only things that Zillion struggles against is high DPS, like things like Azir, or massive wombo combos where he's got way too many targets yeah. to juggle. And ultimate. So if Damwon can find a really good engage with the Maokai Jarvan MF combo, just like he talks about, then the Zillion ult will be negated. And if Lucian gets the 4-5 items and can free hit in fights, then the Zillion will struggle. But as Damwon keep committing to this single target, Keria... 
sit comfortably and press one button. And in these extended games, the zillion passive, the experience that you can actually funnel into these members can become quite valuable. You know, Yushi is up a little bit on his own. Uh, Khan. All three coming in a little bit sloppy for Kana. He does have the flash almost off of cooldown. Here he's coming in over the wall. Khan could be in trouble. The flash forward. Jumping has now been locked up. He's got no blood in the room going in. Kana no longer will get burned down. Jumping is going gold, but they should be able to finish up the kill here. That's the lockup. That's going to be a bad away. It's a one for one. Top for mid. Kana getting a little bit excited there when he sees Showmaker with no flash and locked up from Faker. He commits his flash as well and ends up trading a one for one. He has TP in a minute's time for when this dragon spawns and T1 have some control of the bot side of the map. That to me felt like nerves. You don't need to actually commit your flash there. You can wait for the Zillion to come through. They're trying to hunt for ghosts. We'll see if they can find them, but yeah, could have played it slowly, waited for Carrie to have the ulti there to save you, and spending your flash as Kennen is so expensive. Oh, ghost in no man's land. The Baron being someone's here. Used against him. forward to find the kill. T1 prior nexus is the bearer of the Drake there. Kana TP behind him! But they want a little bit more and Kana stepping forward. Predator coming in from Showmaker. He's zooming forward and he hits Kamushi with the full combo. He's gonna be in trouble. There's no ultimate there to stop him. But Khan getting locked up. Khan, can he make it out of this one? The snare is there. Khan finishes the fight. T1 taking absolute control of these skirmishes and now Showmaker, he's gonna be in trouble. The knockback comes in. It's Clutch owner running for the hill. T1 getting everything they want. Yeah, they pushed down one back and they heard them like sheep. They chased him down and get all of their summoners almost other than Canyon, they won't be able to translate into a Baron, but such good mechanical plays coming in from each individual from both sides to keep this fight so prolonged. Absolutely, but I think you can see a little bit of nerves there too. The play from Khan on the bot side, Khan going early on the Zillion ult. That's a 450 gold shutdown that you could have had on Faker, but he didn't wait out the ultimate, and instead Faker survives. Dom one have to run, tails between their legs here. As it's just a great one no, to start it up in the Axe replay. Yeah, they spot out Ghost. Carrier does manage to see him. This all comes from just a Dragon Contest and set up. Ghost is isolated and Carrier just pops the, 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 the bomb onto the Baron, right? So Ghost is tanking it. He has to get out of the pit. Owner saves his E for when Ghost flashes away. And then, like we talked about earlier, the ult comes out onto Faker and Canyon leaves him on one of thinking, okay, we'll let it reset. Damage comes in from the sapling and it procs the ultimate. Oh, I thought it was the Khan W. It was the sapling there. Yeah, Kana was around the back. Khan tries to dodge away. Away, but in the end, T1 was able to chase him down. Yeah, that is huge, being able to actually get the reset to be able to get that revive, not go down, not lose that bounty. T1 now in the gold lead here. And this Zillion, I just think, is, is taking over the game. It feels like it has been so critical. The move speed, the revives, the Guardian plus exhaust to actually stop a lot of what Dom1 is trying to do as far as their first goes. Absolutely. And I think when you look at the side of the T1, when you've got a Zillion we, we, sitting back reviving these members, Dom1 feels like a team that has to step forward now to shut this pick down. But if you walk forward into the cannon, you're making Kana's life so easy. Execution is going to be naming the game here. Is Kamuyoshi doing his best for fast impression? Just zooming around with that Zillion speed up. And T1 got the Cloud Dragon. So Dom1 aren't on three dragons. They have the Cloud Dragon. They'll slow down the soul point. Yeah. And they're just trying to contest this mid push non stop. Faker doesn't want to go on a side lane. Kana doesn't want to go on a side lane against Khan and Showmaker with Predator. They don't want to get picked off one by one. You were talking about it, Azale. That was one of the big problems T1 had was side lanes. They would get pulled out a lot. It looks like in this series, they're just grouping up mid. Brutes forcing down mid for tier ones. Kana sitting on a flank, just ignoring bot waves. Yeah, I think he's looking to see if someone was going to come bait check there because he, he does have the damage to actually burst down someone like Khan. But he's also hesitant to show bot because he has no TP. So he's showing bot now. And Damwon will look to make a play top. He's just barely not connecting. Baker making it out. Not even close. All time down. Playing with fire there a little <laughs> bit. As we talk about getting caught out on sides, Faker almost dies. Kana is pushing bot with no TP, and we know what Damon's like around this Baron, especially against Mad Lions. In that, in that series, they weren't afraid to just start up a Baron and force a fight if you misstep on the map. Kana being bot with no TP, making sure it's a 5v4. I mean, if Faker gets caught there, Dom won't start Baron because Kana's bot, no TP, Faker's dead. That would be a massive play, but Faker just barely able to get out here. And this is this is getting really, really exciting. This next fight is feeling like there's going to be fireworks. Zillion with Cloud Soul, by the way, is like comical levels of fast to where your whole team with a passive move speed. <laughs> Plus, if, if T1 Shirelias. gets towards Soul, you have Sorelias, you'd have four Cloud Souls, so you basically don't have a cooldown in your ultimate anymore at that point. It's oh. bad news when the Syndra has Predator and she's zooming as fast as she can and the Zin's just <laughs> running past you. <laughs> now, that, that's not the look.
look that you want here. They have more horsepower. <laughs> I mean, they're not even running. You got the same bolt, but he's in a Ferrari, so. <laughs> But I think the big thing for Damwon was holding the early to mid game together was Khan was winning over side lane. The Lucian was ahead, yeah. we saw three kills towards the top side, but now Khan is down a level onto Kana, and TP's coming up as well. So the side lane pressure we expected Damwon to have is not there. What they have is control, but T1's raw team fighting is better with things like the Kennen and the Zillion, as we talked about, but Damwon still have got good pick potential, and they have got good wombo combo if it comes together. And look how high level Gumiyushi is at this point. Kiri has been putting all his experience into this Jin. He's higher level than, than the solo laner as well, Showmaker just hit 14, but he's two levels up on Khan on this Lucian. I think the reality is it's so hard to get the back line even hit. And now that Dorf and Ultimate. You can see Don Juan Kia posturing like they want to get something done. Predator popped by Showmaker. T1 playing with a lot of respect here. Faker on the bottom side. They know they can't fully commit for anything. I also really like going for the rapid fire third here in this case on Jin because you can get the zillion speed up, you move in, you get this one long range shot. If that's a crit, that poke starts to become pretty impactful. Definitely does. Baker is help on now. Looks like he will be the side yeah. lane of T1. He's going with TP to join up towards the Baron yeah. pit. And they really want to crack open this mid tower, T1, so uh, they can start pushing into the damn one's top side on the top side of the map. Push them out and get some vision lines to start up Baron and look for turns with things like the cannon. And we know those cannon flanks are so incredibly crucial to finding winning team fights. You saw Kana hovering in fog of war with no mid lane tower down. It gets so much easier once they are able to break that. But for now, Dawnkia doing an excellent job of holding the line. Sadly, hard for them to play super proactively. Again, level 11 zillion, relatively low cooldown on that ultimate. But they're gonna need to fight for these drakes. They're gonna need to fight for Baron if it comes to that. Canyon stepping forward here. Trying to find a lock of it, just a little bit of poke, but risky face check, just to secure a little bit of priority around this game. Talk about scaling the Zale in T1's favor. Faker on Rise, level 15 and 3 items. That's a scary opponent yep. to be against. Rise is one thing in the latest game, but Faker on Rise is another in a world semi-final in game 3, which can set the momentum for the rest of the series. T1 starting to contest midwaves as 5. TP coming in, show Faker the match. Everyone wants to stop each other getting into river, but T1 have access for 20 seconds on the Dragon. Kumayushi has so much speed to work with. Rapid fire, fourth shot, goes in for the poke. They're gonna try to look at rinse and repeat. And T1 have the luxury items here. They got stopwatch on top, on jungle, nothing on the side for Dom 1. They have the three items complete, both mid and bot. The three just complete for Showmaker. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. It's taking the fight. I never thought I'd say this, Dracos, but Carrier just engaged on Zillion. The, the Jin W hit on the Showmaker, and Carrier flashes forwards with the double bomb to find the engage. Four kills for one for T1. Faker with the right one. Insanely good follow up for Kana, but he gets one shot before he can use Zulk. But, but T1 will get the Baron. T1 onto the Baron. The next evolution of support here at Worlds. We've seen the Maokai, but it is all about the Zillion. Carrier is destroying Dawn. They just don't really know how to play out these fights. They see these people piling in. They don't want to overcommit too much damage. But then if you're not putting enough damage in onto owner, well, then you can't even finish anyone off. And T1 even get the luxury of waiting for the respawn there for Kana to get five Baron buffs. Let's see it one more time. Look at this. Gumushi walks up. Hits the W and Carrier is engaging on Zillion with a double bomb and then is ready to react in time to make sure his team is safe. Canyon goes in to negate the engage but doesn't have enough damage follow up so Kumayushi can, he just sits in the pit all and all. Obviously fantastic fight coming through. Love the finish here. Realm Warp across. You can see T1 playing with absolute confidence again. Rookie lineup showing up like this against the team who so thoroughly thrashed them domestically. Putting up this level of performance in game three. Fantastic to watch. Short circuit. Oh my days. Ghost is dead! Kumiyoshi has killed Ghost 50 seconds! Oh Ghost, they have the mid push, they have Baron, but Barrel has to use Luke with the fight time. Owner is on the side. Yeah, they're they're looking to try to end here. Owner wants the flank, they're TPing in. Flashing away. Going back. All the T1 flash, they've got the Baron, they've got everything they need. They're in there. Tons of flash that's available with Dombok as well. Carry with Ultimate, they've got all the tools they need to finish this game. Dombok, Kia, have to weather the storm, but it's feeling harder and harder. Level 16, Jin Gomushi has so much movement speed to work with. T1 are on the cusp of giving Dombok two back-to-back -back defeats. Even though they came into this series undefeated at World 2021, the Siege is coming in for T1. They have big tools available. Kana has flash, like you said, Dombok, very careful. 
to risk anything. They do not want to give anything away. Double kill. How many times they pull the rabbit out of the hat? Not the mirror. 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 Dumwa, T1 in the driver's seat and looking to close this one out. And we can see this again, how Ghost went down, and it's the trap into the W there. Catches him out and just bursts him down. I mean, look how fast he is! That's not a human being, that's a car! He just completed the IE on base as well. Ghost is in trouble here, because Gumi Yushi is massive. Yeah, now T1 still have a little bit of Baron Buff to work with one minute left. They got the top tier two, they got the top tier three. Now they're looking at the bot tier two. A lot of standing gold for them on the map, and they want to push this forward. This Jin is unstoppable. He has both summoners up very shortly, and he has so much movement speed to work with. That one only really has skill shots to lock him down, and he can still flash out of the Jarvan ultimate. Worst case, if you try to burst him down, he has a zillion ult right behind him. Gumayushi has every single tool he needs to help T1 win this game. Gumayushi said, he believed that they were the best bot lane in the tournament. This performance between the Zillion and the Jin certainly looking like it might be the case. Absolutely yeah, dominant here. Now it all comes down to footwork. He's got the movement speed as long as he doesn't get hit. Team 1, or rather DK, don't feel like they have any answers for the champion. It's so difficult as long as Carry is playing far behind the Jin. I mean, he's on four items. Ghost only has two completed. Every time the rapid fire is ready, you get sped up, you walk forward. If you can get one auto on any of these squishies, it is dangerous. And T1 are pushing on all sides. Anna, with that speed up, he's trying to threaten as well. One mistake, Kumi, one overstep, one cinder stun hitting him could affect T1's team fight. If he gets locked down and the Zinnial has to be used very early, it's dangerous. Yeah. 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 She will not find the curtain call, and Don Juan Kia will live to fight another day. A great engage there from Don Juan. That's what they needed. Threatening multiple members, so Karia couldn't get a high value ultimate. Kana actually went down, and Karia only got the cell faulty, which is really not what you're looking for as the support zillion. It's about bringing up these tough to kill carries, so you have to take them down twice. And in this case, Don Juan hold on with a brilliant engage. Yeah, Don Juan knew they had to pull the trigger. Canyon does find it. Owner buys a lot of time in the back line and he's gonna buy even more now that he's got a Guardian Angel. The good thing for Damon though is Gumayushi has no flash. So now when he does this again, he will die, but they will have the Zillion ult to back him up. But you can see the damage Gumayushi does in these fights as he flashes away. The turn he has, so much damage to push Damon back. And one of the biggest problems is that Karia gets caught in there with him. The Zillion must be far enough backwards. You see Kana goes down, he has the self all there. Karia misses positioning and Canyon immediately punished. Yeah, Kana flashed into the Jarvan ultimate wall there so he couldn't get over and then it turns into this 3v4 stare down where Faker wants to force it. Gumayushi gets the kill onto Ghost, but then Khan, stopwatch comes out from Faker, and then he does land the route, runs away, pops the ultimate, and brings T1 to safety. Such a tense game. It felt like the edge of victory there for T1. If they played that one out perfectly, game was absolutely in their hands. Carrier getting caught. Canyon seeing his moment, seeing his opportunity. 23 seconds left to the soul. Don Juan Kia can get that. Maybe that is their way back into the game. But for now, T1 taking control of the Dragon Pit, taking control of the area. Don Juan Kia are going to have to fight their way back in if they want to contest that Drake. And now Carrier has Zonia, so he has an ability to actually keep himself safe and still save that ultimate for a teammate. And Zillion scaling is just so insane from the support position. You do not need gold, you just need the levels at this point. And T1 are going to be able to grab this dragon for free. Faker is level 18 on this rise, highest level in the game. Gumayushi, level 17. Look at that one. Khan is level 15. If Faker lands any combo on him, he's dead. If Gumayushi gets two auto attacks, he is dead. T1 own the map right now. That one has to pick and choose their fights very, very carefully if they want to win this game. Gumayushi now five items. He's 100% great at this point. That is so so terrifying with what is a largely really squishy team that Don Juan are running. Yeah, and Don Juan Kia, range certainly not in their favor outside of Showmaker's ability to cast out of the week, but with how fast this Jin is, it feels nigh impossible to land. If it's a slow, extended speed, these rapid fire came in auto attack. They're gonna cut through the health bars of Khan, of Ghost, of Showmaker. Nerf. Forward, all of Don Juan Kia retreating out. Very fast forward, and not a man, but a car. T1, they can push them in hit so far and then use the Realm Wolf to take all of T1's ground. Can you reaching the for Stellar on the side? Owner on the flank, Canyon locked up for now. Here comes the first call and TP into the mid lane. Canyon trying to find Dragon. Oh, but so you see, spots it and calls him on it as T1 on the mid lane. Hana is going to get resurrected, but that's the ulti 
down. What is he doing? He stepped forward and now he has to go pull it. Perfect on the side. Goes owner now. He's taken down as well. CK coming out for owner. Blocked up there. Showmaker now has to back off. Look over Yuji. He just threw it in. Back. He's got like now. T1. Move in and look for the end. You can run. You can hide. But Guma Yuji is coming for you, Dom. Like they're gonna go for the top in if they have the realm orb, but they want to go towards the Baron. Showmaker will go back to base and get his mana back up. He will don't have a way to push further in, and Kana is very low. It looks like he won't be able to end the game, but two in him, and here's the realm orb straight to Baron. They're gonna pick that one up. T1 look very disjointed in these fights. Kana going in when they've already got a pick. And he has to go back to pop the ult, but Terry has to use the ult to save Kana. A lot of things were very messy there. Losing the on order two. So, that one still lose the fight, but they lose Baron, and T1. Like that. And this is where you can see that lack of experience from some of the T1 players. I think that's nerves to me. When you see Kana going in so far ahead of the team, you know, they're going for this initial play. Kana arrives, gets the speed up, and it felt like he just decided he was going for it as Kumiyushi sniping down Canyon. And this is where you're just going to forward, right? He gets stunned up. They have to blow the Zillion Ultimate immediately. Then he's into the Zonias, but he's going to die either way. Owner even loses the GA off of that. And it just really feels like nerves. Definitely overall a very messy fight when you see it back and that's the thing about the Jin as well is that if you make mistakes if you miss position at all, the movement speed makes it so easy now for him to punish. But that said, Kana, the one who needs to clean it up coming to this final fight, he has the flash, he has the ultimate, there is no exhaust for Ghost. This is his time to shine. He might not even need to if he wants to keep up a nice slow speed. Highlighted earlier, one very fast Jin with four shots, walk in and out and just take after health like that. Yeah, can we feel that? But he has so much move speed still, he can just keep walking forward with the rapid fire. And he's taking Damon back, this third inhibitor is gonna fall. T1 has three inhibs down now against Damon, backs against the wall, they're pushing to their nexus, Komiyoshi. Big damage, zoning them all the way, he has to go back to the power to heal up. Baron and power cannon minions now raining down on these nexus towers. Damon Ki is still stepping forward, still ready, they know this is gonna be their final fight. Fighting with absolutely no fear, but if he gets caught, if he gets hit by anything, he could get taken down. Barrel trying to jump right around, now the Multi now comes out, but he feels so much power to go there. Multi coming from that, doesn't do anything in the face. The Zin's out, ultimate, and now he's going to leave it in. He smells trouble with 